now again uh, we have to see the some formula okay so jet pump is coming like this then it is going like this yes many way people are drawing so i am also drawing in different way so there is no state fixed rule that i have to draw like this okay then i have one nozzle here nozzle i can make like cross section like this okay so i'll be shading it because i am taking cut out view okay and this is your primary fluid again primary this is secondary actually secondary fluid so primary fluid uh, pressure p1 flow rate q1 h1 energy and p3 secondary fluid pressure q3 uh, volume flow rate and h3 energy and discharge discharge pressure p2 q2 your this is two actually okay this is one this is three okay discharge pressure p2 flow rate q2 energy h2 okay now flow ratio they use the term flow ratio flow ratio equals m equals q3 by uh, q3 by q1 okay how much uh, fluid is getting sucked and area ratio this a, a ratios uh, you have to remember actually area ratio r equals uh, a j by a t this is a t a j means here nozzle area okay they are using a j by a t uh, q2 q2 equals q1 plus q3 you see total volume flow rate q2 is q1 and q3 total addition uh, q1 equals a j v j q3 a s v s a s means uh, this area suction area a s q3 q3 is the secondary fluid so this is a s and v s okay fluid area h dimensional head dimension less head equals dimension dimension less head equals uh, p2 minus p3 p1 minus p2 so this is head actually uh, for peak efficiency for peak efficiency for peak efficiency uh, mp mm, that mass ratio M mp equals q3 by q1 hp equals p2 minus p3 p1 minus p2 okay so q1 formula will be like this 1214.5 aj root over p1 minus p3 by gamma 1 gamma is your density okay specific gravity sp gravity okay uh, of power fluid of power, power fluid and these are psi unit is psi p1 p2 p3 is all P in psi okay so a s by a j equals a throat minus a j divided by a j so this gives 1 by a t a t minus a j divided by a j by a t just dividing by a t so this finally comes to 1 minus r by r so this is area ratio okay uh, okay so this uh, figure uh, i have taken from kermit brown actually normally this figure will be drawn when you are doing experiment okay so this will be flow rate m ma, ma, uh, flow ratio m and this will be h head ratio okay so in previous uh, for, uh, slide i have shown the flow ratio formula is p2 minus p3 p1 minus p2 okay flow ratio q3 by q1 okay so for different r value for a different ratio uh, 
R value, you can see this curves. Okay, head is going down, head is going down. And if you see eta efficiency, so efficiency is like this and does not cross 25% actually. Okay, so it can, you can get 30% around efficiency. Okay, so uh, using this chart actually, you can do some, you can solve some mathematical problems. Okay, so I am redrawing the curve so that it will be more visible. Okay, so approximately uh, the data will be coming from this chart. Uh, write down one problem based on this previous formula. So, let us say one jet pump, hydraulic jet pump is having a uh, P1 equals 600, 6000 psi, P2 equals 3000 psi, P3 equals 1000 psi. Okay. Q3 by Q1 equals 0 0.285 given. So, eta equals you have to calculate. How to calculate? First, you draw the figure, okay? Nozzle, uh, then okay. So, P1 is given 6000 and P2 is given here. P2 will be somewhere here, okay? Uh, let's say I'll draw like this. P2 is here 3000. Uh, no, P this is p3 this is p3 equals 1000 p2 equals uh, 3000 why i am saying this one p2 should have lower pressure this is the highest pressure this is the in between pressure okay because you cannot get p2 more than p1 right because p1 is a motive pressure so that pressure must be higher and again p3 and p2 p3 must be lower because P2 will be the almost averaging of P1 and P3. So, it will be in between. So, from there I am just guessing this will be the values. And Q3 given, Q3 by Q1 ratio given is 0 0.285. Okay. Uh, we have to find eta. So, eta first you calculate H. Okay. H equals P2 minus P1, P3 minus P2. Uh, P2 minus P3 and P1 minus P3, P2. Okay. So, this uh, gives 3000 minus P3 is 1000 divided by P1 6000 minus 3000. So, it is giving 0 0.667. Okay. Now, M is given. So, eta equals m into h. So, multiplying this one, we get 19 percent. Uh, so, if you, you should not get uh, efficiency more than 30 percent. If 30 percent is there, then you have to cross check whether things data is correct or maybe your calculation um, may be erroneous. So, similarly, uh, many problem can be created using this uh, formula. For example, I can change p1, p2 or I can give eta value. We can uh, calculate back to P1 or P2 or you can calculate flow rate also. Even you can use the chart also to calculate. For example, H you got 0 0.667. Uh, okay. So, H 0.667 like 0.667 here. So, you draw a horizontal line and you see the area ratio. Okay. From area ratio, you can calculate directly your mass flow rate or if you have M, then you can calculate directly area ratio. Okay. Uh, or And efficiency also. This from efficiency curve also you can get how much efficiency you are getting. Okay. So this chart also you can use. Okay. So uh, pressure and friction loss. Okay. Uh, in for hydraulic engine pump we have seen uh, how the pressure is varying or pressure can be calculated from the top to bottom with friction. So, for jet pump also we have uh, some formula we will design uh, draw similar figure and we will try to formulate that. So, it is coming like this then there is one jet pump here ok. So, jet pump is there. So, I have suction here then here diffuser. So, this will be going out 
okay so this is going out like this uh, now I have jet pump here so this is going like this this is going like this okay now this is like this I have well bore okay uh, well bore like this okay now this is surface pressure your delivering fluid so this is power fluid power fluid this is your return tube power fluid means fluid is going down return fluid means fluid is coming out from the well bore and this is jet jet pump so both fluid must be mixed but in hydraulic engine pump you can mix or uh, you, you, you can avoid also mixing if you avoid mixing that is better if you mix that is also fine then on surface you have to separate again but in jet pump case your well bore fluid and surf, uh, pump fluid or power fluid will be mixed okay so let's say suction p3 pressure q3 your flow rate and g3 is your gradient and power fluid your gradient g1 p1 pressure friction f1 and flow rate q1 and return fluid i can say same thing q2 flow rate g1 gradient p1 pressure f uh, g2 gradient p2 pressure f2 friction uh, yeah now uh, i have fluid up to this level initially we are assuming okay so this is h3 h3 and this whole column is h1 uh, h1 okay pump setting depth this is pump setting depth setting depth and this is your uh, pump submergence pump sub margins okay uh, now fluid is getting sucked because of this nozzle is created okay so fluid will be entering and it will be moving through this okay it is return channel it's returning fluid and fluid entering power fluid here okay now frictional pressure drop frictional f1 f2 is a friction f3 uh, f3 we are assuming there is no friction in the suction side uh, frictional pressure drop and g1 g2 g1 g2 g3 gradient hydraulic gradient uh, then p1 equals h1 g1 h1 g1 plus ps the surface pressure plus gradient surface pressure from from surface you're pumping so that pressure plus gradient the fluid column weight so that is h1 g it okay minus frictional pressure drop f1 because when fluid is going down friction is resisting actually so some pressure must be minus that friction part p2 equals h1 g2 same height fluid will be lifted up so g2 gradient is change why gradient is change initially you pump power fluid now power fluid mixed with your well bore fluid so average g or gradient will be different than g1 again well head pressure p well head pressure will be different p well head pressure plus friction okay why plus will be this fluid is going uh, outward and that friction part also you have to work when your pump delivering so delivering means well head pressure you have to cross you have to lift the fluid plus you have to cross the friction okay and p3 your suction pressure h3 g3 h3 means how much submergence is there that much fluid is pushing down pushing inside a uh, pump and g3 we are assuming the well bore fluid gradient is g3 we are assuming there is no frictional pressure drop because 
velocity is lower but when velocity is very high we have to consider friction pressure drop because uh, otherwise it will be uh, erroneous okay and velocity lower friction pressure lower we, uh, pressure drop lower we can ignore that okay efficiency effect of design variable whenever you are uh, thinking about efficiency and uh, hydraulic jet pump so you have seen this h and m relationship it is like this right and if i put eta also eta so eta becomes like this and eta one limit is there okay eta limit in our case we did cfd simulation there we got 35 around okay 35 we cannot we did not reach 40 percent efficiency but here actual practice uh, it is uh, they are showing in the chart 26 percent so 10 to 30 percent is reasonable okay eta percentage and what the what are the design parameters which affect the design variable for example this nozzle angle what will be the nozzle size okay dn or maybe this angle uh, will be affecting okay so nozzle will be looking like this okay so nozzle hole is there it will be exiting okay uh, so this angle will matter then your mixing chamber length and size so this l mixing chamber length mixing chamber diameter diffuser length okay mix l2 different other is will be confusing okay diffuser length will be different diffuser angle will be different this is alpha 2 alpha 1 uh, so all these parameter when uh, you are going for an optimization of design parameter so this will be affecting again this optimization you design for one fluid one pressure if you change fluid you change pressure you change suction fluid so the, all the parameter will be changing so you do not get any universal design this is optimal for all the parameters all the designs all viscosity temperature flow rate and pressure it is there is no such uh, jet pump so for a specific application there will be some optimal design for example high viscosity fluid or sand is there gas is there and again gas when uh, whenever you have in well bore so gas will reduce your performance actually because when it is sucking okay suction is there so gas will try to expand and when it is trying to expand it will try to mix up here okay when mixing is happening so that will create low suction okay because gas already there so low suction will create low efficiency low performance so again there is no moving part there is no retrievability in four or five years because there is no failure almost so because of that one although efficiency low people are using jet pump and we did lots of cfd simulation for jet pump and one uh, paper we also reported like uh, some of the nizamuddin international journal for machinery and there we have seen that viscosity if you are changing viscosity head ratio uh, head ratio here n is written normally we write h okay so head ratio i write h okay head ratio h and mass flow rate if you see this one if i change viscosity okay this is low viscosity this is high viscosity okay this one high this is low so low yeah so viscosity higher viscosity we are getting lower head ratio so lower performance we are getting in efficiency term also if you see eta and mass ratio we are we can see this one efficiency also going down okay if we change our viscosity so uh, and pri primary fluid is water in both cases so we are not changing primary fluid or power fluid power fluid or motive fluid okay or motive fluid the secondary fluid uh, viscosity if you are changing your performance is dropping so if in your well bore if viscosity is different if higher then performance of nozzle or jet pump will be lower okay or performance or efficiency or head ratio will be lower now selection of your artificial lifting system uh, for uh, selection for your well and jet pump okay so jet pump high sand sand there will be no issue actually because sand will be sucked and it will mix up it will move up okay so certain amount of sand is okay gas also should be okay certain amount of gas corrosive fluid 
if you have corrosive fluid uh, in well bore then what you do from surface you inject certain chemical with power fluid so that power fluid will neutralize this corros corrosive fluid and it will be pumping okay so these things are okay deviated well bore also will be okay because you inject high pressure gas uh, high pressure liquid so that we mix up the well bore fluid moving up and it is very short system small system there is no long uh, tubing or not a long cable so deviated well bore is okay depth also you can go 20000 feet depth also very long depth also possible viscosity now viscosity increasing your performance dropping a certain viscosity you can handle because from power fluid when you are injecting power fluid you in give high pressure power fluid so that when a well bore fluid is sucking getting sucked so that fluid temperature will be going up so that high temperature fluid will be reducing viscosity in that way you can handle viscosity but viscosity of secondary fluid or well bore fluid will be reducing performance so you have to increase your fluid temperature or you have to you put some thinner fluid as power fluid so that you can alter viscosity of well bore fluid and that way you can pump volume this is high volume pump okay servicing servicing also very low like four five years one uh, maybe you have to retrieve or you have to install using so so servicing frequent servicing not required offshore application also possible people are doing that one temperature high temperature no problem actually sometime you have to increase temperature actually because there is no non-metallic part so all metal your nozzle diffuser everything in metal so if you have high temperature there is no issue in your jet pump life is very long efficiency there is a problem okay very low efficiency because of efficiency uh, many people may not like but because of life and other uh, benefits people will like to use jet pump npsh you need certain amount of in inlet pressure otherwise there will be cavitation probability okay and cavitation probability also there so you have to maintain certain amount of pressure and you have to maintain uh, the designer's criteria so that you can get less cavitation your pump life will be longer so this is for jet pump but if you consider same thing for a hydraulic engine pump okay for hydraulic engine pump sand not good actually small amount sand is okay but normally it's not good gas no corrosive fluid okay deviated well bore okay depth okay viscosity uh, okay volume low okay servicing may be required because moving element is there so servicing will be required uh, required okay uh, offshore application may be possible temperature okay high temperature also no issues life is lower actually efficiency can be higher okay npsh also need some npsh uh, and cavitation may not be there because low uh, flow rate pump uh, so cavitation may not be there but in some inlet pressure is required so thank you very much for this jet pump lecture next lecture we will start uh, some different topic thank you very much